So today on Project Shop, we're getting back on the milling machine. Today I am going to remount the uh, digital readout. I'm going to put this collet holder back on, and we're going to attempt to fix the mister, which I um, <clears throat> I think that's what these extra bolts were in here. I think those little screws are actually for the collet holder, but uh, I was looking at this thing. And I was like, oh, this thing got crushed. This thing is pretty flat, right? But there's actually two lines in there. So I think it's okay. And if you look at the very end of this, let's see. It has like a mister or a, a air blown across this nozzle type deal. Um, so oil and air are going through two different lines. Um, now the problem with... I might just leave this box dented. I don't know because there's a seam here and I feel like if I um, try to re-bend it, I feel like I could pull that seam apart and then it might leak. I don't know. It already looks like it's going to leak down here. So I don't know if this is going to be salvageable or not. But we're going to attempt to. We, I mean, we could just seal it up, but who knows. And then we're going to clean this up. We're going to clean the light up. We're going to get all the attachments back on the machine so that we can uh, run it. Uh, and then I'm going to make a separate video on machining the plastic things. These, these doohickeys. Now I was looking at these. And... Um, I don't know if, yeah, I don't think they would have made that all wonky and worked like that. I think it, they just kind of bent over time. So we're going to make new ones out of aluminum. And then I was looking at some of the things on the machine like this, like the whole housing on this is like aluminum. Um, I just want to clean it up. I think this would all look nice polished. And like I said in the last video, I want to get rid of this wheel because this thing is supposed to push in like this to engage but it's barely grabbing the teeth i either need to shorten this spacer or something's wonky in there there's something going on i don't know but hey we're here to uh work all the kinks out of this thing man you know it is running and operational all the functions do work um but it would be nice to be able to manually um, operate this without, like, I don't even like the fact that I have to do that. I think if it just had a wheel on there, it would be much nicer. So we're going to look into getting a wheel. Uh, but for today's video, we're going to clean this up. I might even paint it because uh, I just like looking things that look nice. And this is blue. This doesn't match nothing. So that's definitely getting painted. And then this bracket, uh, we'll probably paint as well. The first thing I'm going to do is get all that cleaned up. Because if it does need painting, I'd like it to get it to dry and tack up a little bit while um, uh, working on some of this other stuff. And then by the end of the video, we should have it all ready to rock and roll.
Okay, man, this thing is coming together great. We got the brackets all painted up and uh, got everything wired up. Uh, I tried to zip tie everything up as tight as possible. Uh, I did run into a couple little issues. Um, I wanted to run the wires back behind this um, stop that I fixed. I just zip tied the switch here temporarily. Um, so I went to take this off and then I realized like this thing is about touching this thing right here. And since it's on an angle, this thing is gonna come further and further out uh, as this goes up and we still have about five or six inches of upward travel. Not that we would ever go that high because the end mill is like literally almost at the top of the machine already. So I don't see why we would need to go any higher than this. But um, what I am gonna have to do is because this little screw is like, it's barely hanging on. It's barely caught some threads. I had this off to sneak these wires behind. Um, I'm gonna have to like shave down this spacer or find a different spacer. I have some nice aluminum things that I think I'm gonna change these out with. I want this to be the same size. There's no reason for this to be tapered on an angle like that. And these washers back here are kind of ghetto. I just want it looking nice and the same. Uh, but we were able to clean this up. I was able to slide this back on the original brackets. It's on there nice and stout uh, I tried to coil everything up out of the way as much as possible leaving room for this thing to travel around What we're gonna have to do now is plug everything in um, And then check the travel on everything make sure we're not going to pull the wires loose and turn this on so I'm going to plug in the power supply right now okay hopefully we didn't hit none of our power feeds so not stuck on now I would like to wire this like in a way that it's not um, on the floor like this so the power cord for this and this I think I'm gonna run up and onto the wall and over here somewhere so we're not like having a mess and I think I'm going to take the stainless table that I have in my office and put it right back here move this thing back or I might even move that to the other side and, and move this thing I don't know I think I, I just need a table for mill stuff um, anyway let's uh, fire this thing up Oh, it was on. Okay, so it was on. Let's see if our digital readout works. Power on. Something's happening. Not much. So, not sure what's going on there. Huh. Oh, there we go. Aha, uh -huh. I guess we got a zero reset. Okay, so we're zeroed wherever you are now. Oh, and another thing, I painted this little um, thing on the side. This is for all the collets for the thing here. I don't understand what this thing, this was like this. It, you can either close it or open it. I don't know, it doesn't make any sense, but this holds the collets and I don't know if this I guess that's what this is for too probably to hold collets which I kind of like them over here I'll probably put the the ones that it it says I guess we're missing a tag we might have to oh no never mind this one's a double tag and a chuck so we need a chuck uh, now, the only thing I don't like about this is this is made out of wood. Like, why would someone make that out of wood? Uh, I have this, I was already looking at this huge chunk of aluminum I have here. Uh, anyway, I got a nice piece of aluminum. Yeah. 
I have this big old plate of aluminum. It's just the right thickness. Look at that. Bam. So, we'll do a little project. We're probably going to replace that with this. I think it'll look a lot nicer and give me a little experience running the mill. I'm just going to set that over here. So that's another thing we need to make for the mill. I think that wood just looks tacky. I did put the light on. Okay. Now I put an LED in there. We're going to have to... I'm going to have to find an incandescent bulb that's like small and bright because... Um, there's like an aluminum reflector in there that I think would work a lot better if there was a full bulb in there and kind of project some light. I actually had to modify... <laughs> The LED had this aluminum ring. I had to rip it off and then bend all the aluminum heat sink tabs over. But it's the only light bulb that I have. It had a uh, CFL in there type fluorescent, uh, compact fluorescent light. Um, and then this thing is kind of limp. Look, it goes. <laughs> so... We're gonna have to address that. I think what I might do is just like, I don't even know what I'm gonna do with this. Um, or if we're even gonna use this thing. I mean, it's not even that freaking bright. So, I don't know. But, it is a working light. And for now, we'll just kinda keep it up here out of the way. Um, it does say Lugan on it. Maximum 100 watt, so we'll find some 100 watt bulbs. I think I need to tighten this up. Um, I cleaned that thing. It was filthy. I would like to get a new one or something or something different, brighter, or I, I don't know if we even use it. But let's check and see how our feeds are doing. So this is coming out nice and slow. Oh, our Y axis. She's going really slow let's crank this up a little bit oh this has a okay we just want to make sure we're not see this is where our stops would come in okay so we're all the way forward which is the maximum for any of this stuff we got plenty Plenty on there. We went 2.2730, whatever that means. Now let's run it back. Oh, let me make sure that I move this thing. I did tighten that up. Let me let me move that real quick. Yeah, we weren't even close to that front one. I do need to come over here and tighten this up. So this switch is actually good. It's just that the bolt is sheared off in there. Um, hopefully by the time this video drops, I would have dropped the first video and gotten some suggestions on. Huh, is that, is that all the way? I'm going to get this all the way out of the way, just for now. I don't know where this is eventually going to go, but. Okay. Now, I'm going to run this back. While that's moving, I'm going to crank on this, give this thing some lube. And uh, we're going to. Just keep it lube. <laughs> Until we find the proper stuff, it's just going to get a shitload of WD-40. Okay? And I am going to figure out what's happening with these. Look, it's doing its own wiper. Okay. We're going. Oh, I should check the freaking wires to make sure... Okay, so this is what I was concerned about. 
Let me just uh, stop this real quick. Look at that. Is that 10 inches? Did we move that far? Look at that crud. Um, so, I might have to take these back out. I'm not sure. Or, what I can do is just get them, maybe find a way to get them to come out so they're not interfering with the switch. Let's just keep running this back a little bit. We gotta pay attention. See, this is where the stops. Okay. Whoo, cutting it close. Yeah, so this thing here actually takes a little bit away from how far back. I wonder if we could, if it's possible to mount that on the front. Hmm. Oh, and we forgot a little thing. Where's my, where's my dikes? There we go. You gotta have a good dike in your life. <laughs> Okay, so I am, uh, I don't think I'd really be running the mill back this far. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is set the head to the center of this, wherever this is. That way it's not so close. I mean, I'm sure being closer, you'll probably hit tighter tolerances. Um, you know, I don't know, maybe we'll leave it there. We are three inches out. I don't know where, like, a standard position should be, but I figured if we had it as close, yeah, we're probably going to bring this out a little bit. I'm going to loosen these. I do need to clean those ways. I'll probably do that real quick. Um, but I wonder where the cord for that is looks like someone cut the cord i want to open that up actually and see what's in there where my screwdriver go i've never looked in there yet okay wait a minute i'm getting sidetracked let me let me finish what i'm doing this is what happens to me all day long i'm like oh look at this oh look at that boom boom next thing i know i've got 10 things going on um so actually, I think, I don't think that would be too bad, but I might move that to the outside. I have to see that thing going up and down. So we're going to move this back out. I'm going to... wipe these ways down seems like that was that rubber stuff that was under there right so I just have to keep wiping it down you know the old goo until it's all gone and then we'll just keep a coat of WD on there until like I said we find the right stuff oh I'm like what the hell that light is trying to come on we either got a bad ballast or the bulbs all right let's crank this forward full rapid That's high speed mill in there Yeah, that's almost the middle. So, 
Yeah, I'm probably going to take that head and move it out just so we're out here over the middle. But hey, our uh, our count is where. Oh, look at that. Look how accurate that is. Look at that backlash. I don't know if you can see how much I'm moving the handle. But I guess that thing is super accurate. <laughs> All right, let's run this thing that way. Look at, them. Look at them numbers. They don't even know how to like, they're just like, <laughs> oh, snap. I don't think this thing had a, You know what? This doesn't have a stop for the left and right. Let's check them ways out. I clean them really good. Let's just give them another coat. <clears throat> That's for college, right? Mm -hmm. And then a chuck. Mm -hmm. And then it was missing something, whatever that was. Oh, maybe your paperwork or something. Mm -hmm. Ha! So look at this, man. I got the wires all dialed up and, and zip tied. And let's crank this thing up. Full rapid. Alright, this is what I'm worried about here. How much more we got? Oh, we got a lot more. And what we're going to have to do is just un undo that. Where's my dikes? I got them here. We're just gonna have to undo that. Hey man, can you get me some like two zip ties from over there? We're going to undo this. Ha, <clears throat> ah, we got plenty. Oh look. This is for, th this um, doesn't have a safety switch like the up and down and the, and the uh, what is that, the X mm, or yeah. Y? Which one is the Y, back and forth this way? Yeah. Tell me how far I can go. You see when it ends over there? Yeah. Getting close? Yeah. Yeah, about an inch. Okay. So, huh, I don't know what to think about that. I mean, I don't think I'd be real. I mean, unless there's something big on there, I wouldn't travel this bitch that far. Mm -mm. That seems like a lot. But that, we're just going to coil that back up like this. And that should be good. Okay, that's that. Have you seen my phone? It 
was right next to you on the couch. Okay, that all seems to be working pretty good. Now, now we can open up that back and see what it's doing back there. Let's see if there's even a pump in here. I assume that wire goes up to the switch 220 volt wow so we'd have to see I guess that goes to the coolant oh hey look at that is this thing freaking three phase no way anyway there was a pump in there. Uh, that's going to be a project for like way down the road. Um, how does this thing even go back on? I guess we put it in there sideways. Yeah, before we hook up a three-phase uh, coolant pump, that's crazy. There was four wires on there, but I don't know if that was like, I don't know why that was like that. The only thing I can think of is it's a three-phase pump. <sighs> okay, now I'm fat. I'm gonna run this back so I can get by. That's full speed. Yeah, I like everything except for except for this. Oh, we need to run this up and down yet. Man, imagine having to hand crank these. Now we're gonna test the up and down. Since we're mostly all the way up, oh, that's down. It's coming up. See, this thing is already, it's already touching that bracket. So that definitely has to be addressed. Oh, we gotta make sure we don't run our end mill into the thing. So I highly doubt we're gonna be coming up this high. So I think as long as I do something to keep this kind of out of the way of the switch, we're gonna be good. We'll wrap it down. Let's see what happens. See, all this is going to come down with that. I think what I can do is loosely put it here. Just to kind of keep it 
back out of the way. Heck yeah. That'd be a pretty big part if we were coming down that low. Okay, the only thing I see that's going to be an issue is this thing chafing going up and down. All right, I'm going to stop that there. I don't think we're ever going to go that low. So, I do, I do like this behind here. Um, but I am going to find a piece of plastic. Um, I'm going to tighten, clean that up a little bit. And look at these wires, man. i got to rewire all these. Put new, new wires and plugs to all of these. So I'm either going to take these, when I do the wiring, I'm either going to take them apart and... Um, powder coat them or polish them because they are aluminum as you can see right there I, th I want to polish them I think they look a lot nicer with polished aluminum that's my first milling machine man you know I feel like I need to bling it out <laughs> okay so we definitely need a coupler for that um, this is all okay we got plenty we're not pulling we're not going to go down much further than that this is all kind of out of the way. Um, I could bring this over. Tighten this up a little bit and bring that over like that. Well, we don't want to interfere with our switch that we'll probably never use. We already are interfering with this, but this isn't something we're going to use a lot. So, that being said, I want to try to run something on here. Oh, there's a couple more things like this. Like I said, I want to replace these with aluminum knobs. And I think what I can do is just, this was plastic on a brass insert. I can just turn one of these out on the lathe and thread it on the inside and then paint this. You know, this is, this is pretty much one piece. These are probably screwed in there. Um, so, yeah, other than that, our wires are out of the way. Nothing's pinching. Uh, that's okay. We're good. I think what I'm going to do is just think on this a little bit and either make like a, uh, a like there's one screw here that I kind of zip tied all this to. Um, I like everything tight and, and like if I can put that there, I think that would be, matter of fact, I'm going to do that right now. Just to keep this. Okay, so I wound up taking a phone call and then um, <laughs> I was on the phone for like two hours. So I'm going to call it a night right here with this. It's like two o'clock in the morning. Um, this thing here, I'm going to fill this up with water. See if it actually holds fluid because it looks like that might be compromised right there. And if it is, we're going to have to figure out some type of sealant. And whether or not we can actually get this thing um, operational again. What I basically want to do is just like zip tie this to this. Because this is kind of, well, we can put that wherever. And then just, you know, have our, our coolant. But I'm really stoked about the progress we made today. We got the uh, digital readout. Reset. Um, got everything wired up and cleaned up um i did i did get a guy mentioned in a comment that he has the screws i'm going to email him or have him email me hopefully i can get the screw for that we'll get that dialed in and then i have this 
which I was wondering, I'm, I'm pretty sure I took this off of here, and I was wondering if that has something to do with maybe a stop for the left and right, or I'm not sure what this is. I have no idea. I'm going to clean it up and put it back on, though. It's heavy, so it's either made out of steel or, no, nope, that's aluminum or something. Something heavy. The magnet, the magnet don't stick to it. But the guy, um, I'm pretty sure he had mentioned before he might have these wipers in stock. So I might just order these um, from the guy. He said he's up in Tampa, which uh, it's nice to have a local guy. And then, um, yeah. So, unfortunately, we didn't get to make no chips today, but... Uh, even if the guy does have this stuff in stock, I'm still making these out of aluminum. I think they're going to look way cooler. And um, they're just not going to bend like that is kind of tweaked out. So that's going to give me some uh, run time on the mill. Uh, in the next video, uh, we're definitely going to go through this. See if we can't get it fixed up. I'm going to, if that guy is a machinist dude or, or sells machining products, we're going to get some coolant, some type of, um, you know, machine coolant. We're going to get some machine oil to oil this up properly. So I'm not just constantly hosing this thing down with WD-40, which we're just going to do anyway for the time being. Oh, this one sucks. Yeah, I'm running out of WD-40. Uh, we're just going to keep everything well lubed with WD-40 until I get the right stuff. I mean, this stuff just works great, man. And we're out. Okay. Anyway, uh, another thing, I need to get all of the collets and cutters and whatever. We're going to fill this out. I'm going to use this one here for... You know, these collets, I want to take this off. And I was wondering what these were for, and then I figured it's probably for putting paperwork here. So if you have your parameters or whatever, your milling, your sketch, or your, um, your blueprint, uh, you can put it right there and work it. And then, check this out. This thing here... I was looking at some like one arm 130 pounds two arms 65 pounds i'm like what the heck what the heck does that mean and i figured it means like if you have that's one arm if you had another arm that the weight would go down and it makes sense because this doesn't turn any further than that that's it so i could see having added in another arm you know, and having this thing like over here so you can see it. Because right there, you know, you got to kind of bring it in. It might be kind of close to all your stuff here. Um, and another thing with this is, I didn't show you, but there is four holes here. And there is four holes under this. I don't know if they correspond, but there was thread holes under here. I just zip tied it on there so it doesn't go anywhere. I'm probably going to put a little rubber mat under it to keep it um, kind of isolated from any vibration. I don't think I need another arm. I think we're good with this. I can see it. And being that the power feed is here and here, most likely I'd be standing over here, um, you know, in front of this. I don't know, but, oh, I shut it off. I killed the power. Uh, we probably should shut that off there. And then I want to figure out, like, I ran that all the way up, and then all that oil leaked. I think that's just oil and grease that I kind of sprayed up there. And the fact that I've been spraying WD-40 up there. Um, I know WD-40 cuts grease, but we are going to get the proper stuff for this, being that we're going to put this thing to work here soon. 
Um, so let me know what you guys think. And uh, like I, I'm always saying, any suggestion is greatly appreciated. What do you think about me making this out of that aluminum? Uh, I just don't feel that this wood is a good fit for this. I mean, it is there. It probably function fine, but I just wanted to have aluminum. I have the aluminum plate, you know, and um, I don't know why I got that, but they had a big stack of this aluminum. You see that aluminum goes way back there. These are huge plates. Um, I don't know why I bought them, but I wanted them, and I have enough stock here to make some cool shit. So we're going to make some cool stuff. I'd say I'm probably 80% done dialing this in. There's a bunch of little things now. Like, it'll start up and run, and I can cut some chips, but I, I've been kind of reluctant without the wipers. I don't want to gouge them ways up. Um, but we're pretty much ready to rock and roll with this thing. I am going to do a complete resto on that and um, bring it back you know, looking like this. I was literally, I literally went back and watched the video to find out what side this little nut went on. Uh, it's one thing cool about making YouTube videos. You can go back and see things if, you know, you take it apart. Um, and just how dirty this thing was when I started. It, it really is a night and day difference. Like how crusty that vice looked. And how dirty this whole machine was. I think in the next video I'm going to bring back like. You know do a comparison of where it is now. And what it looked like. And where we're going in the future. You know. Being that this is you know a nice machine. And real, it, this was never on a production line. It was just in the research and development um, division at Pratt & Whitney. It, it really isn't some clapped out, worn out machine. So as long as I take care of it, I can have this thing for a lifetime. So I want to spend the time to like make this thing nice. It already looks freaking awesome, like a work of art. But there's things that I want, like all these plastic knobs. I want to get rid of for nice like aluminum knobs or something or chrome or stainless steel or just something that's going to make it look nice. Even these knobs here, man. They look like crap. These, I think, should be aluminum. Like I said, I want to polish these aluminum. Uh, does it need to be done? No, this thing will run fine just the way it is. Um, I'm just weird like that and like to make extra work for myself that I really shouldn't be doing. <laughs> anyway, I think once I get the wipers on here, um that's gonna be it we're gonna be ready for production with this thing and i'm gonna move right on to the lathe that thing needs to get up and running and i'm also looking for a bigger lathe because that thing's nice that's a um a, like a high accuracy lathe for making small stuff i'm not gonna be able to put that big shaft in there so um for making a shaft for my granny later, I'm either going to have to take it somewhere and have them cut it down for me and then do the milling part myself, or I'm going to have to get a bigger lathe. So I'd like to get a bigger lathe and, um, you know, maybe actually turn that one this way and then put another one over there and just kind of move this table down. I don't know. Um, I'm open to uh, figure that out or just, you know, Put it right here and just have the two lathes. I don't know, but we need a bigger one because that's limited on what I could do. And if we had a bigger one with a bigger chuck and be able to put bigger stuff in it, we're obviously going to be able to do the different stuff. And I can make the granulator or I can fix the granulator and I can make the pre-shredder that I want that I have pretty much all the parts for. But I need a bigger machine. So let me know what you guys think come this far thanks for watching stay tuned we are going to continue with this i want to do a live stream next sunday with the little kiln there we're just going to try to i'm actually going to make a video 
of me melting aluminum. As long as I can melt the aluminum, we're going to do it live, and then we're going to put it right up on this machine. We're going to square up the aluminum and, um, you know, maybe make something or mill, just mill a design into it. I don't know. We'll see. But I want to clean it up on the milling machine rather than just grind on it like everybody else does and, and polish it and make it shiny. We're actually going to mill it and make it a precision piece. And then I'll give it away. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. I'll tell you where we're going, right to the scrap yard. you don't even need a state of record or hydraulics or anything need some old-fashioned hand tools now I definitely don't want to be doing this by hand at all really nice nice little chunk <laughs> 